No apologies, though, for a musical parody that many around the world took as a true sign of his thinking. Bomberan, you know, <laughs> bomb, 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 bomb. <laughs> anyway, uh, when veterans are together, veterans joke. And I was with veterans and we were joking. And if somebody can't understand that, my answer is please get a life. Uh, I'll tell you, what's not said on the television and will not be said on the television is how much Vietnam veterans and the POWs hate John McCain. The Senate felt compelled to set up the select committee and uh, that it took them nine months to set up the committee mainly because of the opposition of uh, uh, Senator McCain who was bitterly opposed to any attempt to find the POWs which is remarkable seeing that he was a POW himself. No instance would he ever, ever give in and say there were POWs left behind. And my first question is how would he know or not know? So just that which is reasonable he never exhibited and I don't know why. Uh, maybe it's a guilt complex. Maybe he promised the Vietnamese something. Okay. And I don't know what it is. Uh, and maybe he actually believes that. That would be the saddest of all. He probably did more harm to the idea of trying to get the truth out than any other single person through the efforts he did to block the release of classified intelligence dealing with the POWMIA problem. McCain stepped in and in effect made it harder to get documentation. That certainly hurt us because we had hoped for a massive release of documentation. Many, many documents were held back for, for no reason and our, our goal on the committee was to just dump this stuff, to, to declassify it, literally, to the public. Uh, but of course, uh, you know, uh, they withheld information from the committee. Uh, the U.S. government held all kinds of information from the committee, withheld information from the committee. I know that for a fact. He didn't want nobody to check his background. Because a lot of POWs that were with him in the camp said he was a, was a collaborator of the enemy. And he didn't want nobody looking into his background in the camp. What went on in that camp? That stuff is still classified, so nobody can see it. And he just had it classified forever, so nobody will ever look at it. Even POWs, we knew who wanted to see their own, their own uh, debriefings, were not permitted because of the McCain uh, regulation. But where did McCain get compliments for doing this? The bureaucrats at the Pentagon, right. because it put a workload on them. It put a workload on them for missing and action people. And did we need that bill to handle a Scott Spiker case? Oh, you bet we did. And also what it did, and this is what he really opposed, and if you remember the contentiousness we got into him in his office, was that it would hold the bureaucrats accountable by penalty of law That's if right. they lied or if they withheld information. That's right. And he fought tooth and nail to protect those bureaucrats. Yes. Because they were protecting him. I could never understand that. Why would we, uh, if someone was guilty of withholding information that would help us to solve the mystery of what happened to an MIA and did it deliberately, why would we not want to prosecute that person? Um, so I could never understand it. I thought the language was written. I, th I know Bob Dornan had a hand in it. I thought the language was written very well. Uh, I, I supported it, fought for it hard uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the U.S. Senate and mostly on the Armed Services Committee where we debated it. But it was, it was watered down to basically where it was almost worthless. Now, one of the things that happened with that bill is that we were submarined. The House side, we passed it uh, with no, no, I don't believe anybody opposed it. Was it, it was a pretty much unanimous vote. 401 to 0 on the House, with every single Republican who is serving sponsoring it, and about a third of the Democrats. But on the Senate side, we had, we had one person standing in the way of getting in positions that would have been very tough on government bureaucrats who didn't tell the truth, and that one person was Senator John McCain. John McCain um, uh, and John Kerry both were um, not pursuing this at the, with the same uh, approach that I was. He insisted that no committee be set up unless he was chairman. Obviously his intent was to kill everything. 
Okay, uh, I appreciate you inviting me here, but what I don't understand is this, you're supposed to have a committee of 12. <laughs> All my congressmen from Connecticut walked out. Uh, all the senators, uh, senators were on that panel. They all walked away. McCain took off. Kerry took off. All that evidence was coming out in Korea because they knew that if they came and listened to the truth, they'd have to keep the hearings open. They didn't want any information. So they weren't interested in doing anything with the information other than trying to discredit it. North Korea did not return a large number of American servicemen at the end of the war, and that some of the men left behind were sent to communist China and to the Soviet Union. Internal documents and statements made at the time also show that our government believed that men were still alive in captivity, and until only a few months ago has kept that reality from the American people. It has covered up what it knew through a pattern of denial, misleading statements, in some cases lies, and by doing so, with regard to the Korean conflict, it broke its commitment with the people who put on the uniform to fight for the freedoms and protection that we and our allies enjoy today. What I found interesting was that coincidental to Kerry running the committee, Vietnam gave to Kerry's family sole rights for the negotiation of all real estate issues within, within Vietnam. over there, but I was back in the jungles using a top secret clearance for different things uh, during my years as a Vietnam veteran. And uh, I know a lot of Vietnam veterans, brother, and a few POWs. And uh, all the POWs that I've talked to over the years say that John McCain is a lion skunk. You know, that he, he never was tortured. They were there in the camp with him, and when he came in with his two broken arms because he failed to pull his arms in when he bailed out of his plane and had a leg injury, he immediately starts spilling his guts about everything because uh, he didn't want to get tortured. And he made 32, 32 different uh, videos for the communists uh, uh, speaking out against America and how evil they were for what they were doing in Vietnam. In which circumstances have you been shut down? I was on a flight over the city of Hanoi and I was bombing and was uh, hit by either a missile or any aircraft fire. I'm not sure which. And the plane continued straight down. I ejected and broke my leg and both arms and went into a lake, parachuted into a lake. Information shows that he made over 32 tapes of uh, propaganda for the Vietnamese government. We do know that when he was there, that he cooperated with communist news services in, in giving uh, uh, interviews uh, uh, that were um, not flattering to the United States. He made those transcriptions, and in the transcriptions, I heard a POW who heard them coming into his cell and said, Oh my God, is that Admiral McCain's son? Is that the Admiral's son? Is that Johnny telling us that our principal targets are schools, orphanages, hospitals, temples, churches? That was Jane Fonda's line. Certainly you do what you need to do to stay alive. Nobody would fault anybody for that. But there comes a point in time where enough is enough. He, he, he admits that he gave them all of the codes, all of the data, everything. And uh, I'm not even so much blaming him for that because under torture people do that. But it turns out he wasn't tortured. And then right. he started singing like a canary in seconds. Yeah, they call him, uh, the Vietnamese communists call him the Songbird. Matter of fact, that's his code name up there is Songbird McCain because he just came into the camp singing and telling them everything they wanted to know. And it sounds so good at first. McCain was offered the chance to come home. They called him the prince. And he could have. But nobody ever takes that one step beyond that. If John, Admiral 
John McCain II, Jr., if his son, a lieutenant senior grade, had accepted this princely status and come home in 1967, while the others would sit there for five years, what would the Navy have done with the son of an admiral who opted to get special treatment and come home? No Navy career, no House seat, no Senate seat would have been the end of his career. So what I'm saying is, yes, he chose to stay, but did he have an alternative if he ever wanted to have a life? And what would it have done to his father?